Well, it's another bright and beautiful day in South Wales. It was a cold start this morning, but it's going to be nice and sunny. And later on in the day, we've got a bit of rain coming in. So actually, I think that's a good thing. Uh, the ground's getting really dry. And over the weekend, they're forecasting a bit more rain. And that isn't going to hurt either. So with all that in mind, we're going to try and get this finished today. We've got to get the front section of the mesh on, which shouldn't be too difficult. And then I need to fill in these trenches and get myself organized inside. I'm probably going to create this soak away at the same time so that any water that congregates down in that trench is taken away and can run down the natural slope. And for that, I'm going to use the stones that I sieved out of the various places in the plot and the polytunnel. So uh, there's plenty to do today. I'm going to need a bit of help from Mrs. K, but I don't think you'll see her because she's a bit camera shy. Oh well, I'm grateful for the help. So the water that I'm putting on the rhubarb at the moment is coming from a water butt, which are actually getting very low now. And I need to make sure that I keep a goodly supply of water coming over to my other tanks from the kind lady who lives on the corner. And then when that eventually runs out, I've got enough to keep going everywhere. Because one thing's for sure, if you don't keep watering plants in the dry weather, they do not prosper well. And leaving them to nature's normal schedule can be a bit risky. There we go, that little bit of extra water will make all the difference. I've now taken out a fair amount of soil so that I can drop that overlap down under the soil level. And the idea of that is to prevent any burying into the run by rodents or anything else that buries. So that'll be underneath the soil level. Soil will go back down on it. And then the drainage will go on through and down the gradient. So the next two pieces of mesh have now been fixed together by Mrs. K. And we're ready to try and fix those sections onto the front. So we're doing pretty well. We've got the mesh pegged down now so that no rodents can burrow in and we'll backfill that with soil. The front is now on and tied to all the bars and the door is cut out. But unfortunately, even though the door's got a centimetre gap at the top, and just over a centimetre at the bottom, the middle's about two and a half centimetres. So this piece seems to have bowed out during the wet and the winter weather. So I'm going to put a strip of wood all the way down the door just to close that gap a little and enable me to fix the lock back. Now it shouldn't take us too long. I think we've got pretty much there in terms of the backfilling around the coop or the run 
Um, everything in there is nice and secure and I filled in all the way around the edges and down the back and just leveled out inside. So one other component that comes with this run is a cover that goes over the top. In a lot of runs it's a half cover, in this case it's a full cover and that will just afford the chickens some shelter uh, during a really sunny day and hopefully keep them dry on a really rainy day. So we're going to unpack that and see how it assembles. Well, I've got to say I'm super impressed with how that tarpaulin goes on. It uses these circular elastic fixings with a ball on the end and you just poke them up through the wire, wrap them back round and put the ball through the wire and they fix all the way around. Any one I couldn't fix sits over the ridge bar but it works really really well. So yeah I'm very impressed with that and should keep it warm, dry and a bit shady when the sun's really bright. So it's looking good. I think uh, the last thing to do is to get that bolt back onto the door and that'll be a job done for the frame. I need to create that ramp out and then it's all about getting the hutch inside and getting a route from the hutch through to the run. So I've got a bit more path to extend along here. I use these pavers and a few more that I have and they'll go down and across to the coop so that during the winter months when it's muddy nobody slips up and that's going to leave a nice square bed here and I'm already thinking that would be really nice for some flowers. Well there's literally a shed load of things to do today um, but the most important and the most pressing is to get some airflow into the shed. Given that we're going to get the chickens in here, or at least some of the chickens, it's important that in the summer months when the warmth in here lifts, that I've got a good airflow so that none of the chickens are uncomfortable. So what I'm planning is to put a vent, or at least a drop down window into the shed here and also to do the same thing at the far end so that we've got a through flow of air during the day and of course we've also got the flow of air through the chicken guard door so that's the aim and to do that I've brought a whole load of gash wood wood that's spare from various projects over the years and I'm trying to do this at no cost and I've got the tools and we're going to get underway. One thing I have got to do is clear out the accumulated rubbish that I've got in here and make myself some space. I'm just going to open up the polytunnel. Ooh, look at those beautiful tulips. They came out overnight, or this morning. So let's just see what's happening in the tunnel today. I've been suffering from cats getting into the polytunnel and leaving me a message. So I've been screening it off. So how are we doing? Well, the beetroot and the lettuce have perked up nicely after planting. Take these covers off during the day. Everything looks good. There's some nice celeriac growing there and some more there. It's coming on well. And that's the earliest celeriac there, which is really coming on and actually needs pricking out as do these broccoli that's the 
Calabrese green heading. So that's the 120 day one. Uh, the beetroot are coming on nicely. And yeah, things are looking good. And in my latest sewing, take the top off. So what have we got going here? Ah, well, that's the saved seed Aquadolci uh, broad beans. A couple there just starting to come through. All the broccoli doing well. The chives have not started. Rocket good. White Lisbon's showing itself. And the Morton's secret uh, lettuce doing well again. Calypso coriander, some nice clusters. The best of all, Swede, which was a problem. Seem to have another couple have come up, which is good. Uh, this is the Gary Swede, my follow up. And that's not doing very well either. Nothing showing at the moment. So getting a bit anxious about Swede. I cut these yellow Rheinsberger long keeping onions uh, the other day and already they've stood up. So that's a really successful strategy. And what have we got under this one? Cover off. So these were the uh, tomatoes that I sowed direct into the polytunnel rather than the propagator. They're money maker. Two have come up, one seems to be trying to come up, but not doing very well. And uh, this is all the courgettes and squash. And of course, courgettes, squash and pumpkins usually like a bit of heat. So uh, this will be interesting to see whether they come up. Um, beetroot, more beetroot doing really well. And here, and we've got some giant collies germinating at the back. So everything working quite well. And over here, we've got the carrots that I sewed into the carrot tower that I built. Let's just take a quick look at those. So they've germinated really well. And as you can see, one of the advantages of growing carrots in a grid like this is that when you get any other weeds, you know that they're weeds because they're not in the grid and all the cross points on the grid are where the carrots are. So the question is, have I got any blanks? And I do seem to have a blank over here. Take these weeds out while I'm here. And if they don't come, I'll probably end up trying to take some of these others as I thin them out and pop them into there. Um, but all going well on the carrots. Strawberries uh, flowering really nicely. Take that dead leaf out. And got to keep an eye on green fly in here. I'm thinking of making an organic insecticide. So uh, watch this space. But yeah, they're all flowering great. Mrs. K's flowers have done really well. And the potatoes also are coming on nicely. Uh, for some reason, these at the back seem to be a lot slower. I think they got dry actually, but we'll see how they go. I did put a new battery into the thermometer that I assumed had ended its natural life. And I have to say at 44.9, I don't think the battery's made any difference at all. Looking at the new thermometer, it's clearly indicating that the high in here has been 32.4 and the low last night just 8.2. So no cold weather last night. After some considerable freehand woodwork, I've managed to put this shelf back up in a more useful place. And I've made these 
vent doors so that we can open and close them. I need to cut out those center pieces. I've put a bit of tape at the bottom to cushion it and they lock quite nicely. And I've done exactly the same over here. And then if we've got the wind coming from a different direction, it can blow into the shed or if it's too strong, we can close one off and open the other. So that's the first step in getting some better airflow into the shed for the chickens. And the next step will be to cut out the actual window panel. The next step I want to take is to get some sort of fixing that keeps this in place so that when I do want to open, it stays in the right place. So I'm figuring if I add a hook to here and a hook to here, and then I can just loop something over to hold the shutter up. Now these bungees that I got for the tarpaulin or with the tarpaulin over the top of the uh, chicken run, I think are gonna serve the purpose. If I put one up there and have one on there, I can simply hold it open. Now I need to cut out this section to make the actual vent. And to do that, I'm gonna use a very wide drill bit and then I can cut it out with my saw. That was a huge effort, but I'm pleased with the outcome. We can now unlatch it, fix it up, and we've got airflow out into the run. And it's actually quite nice to see out the back of the shed. And then over here, we have the same arrangement. and we can see out the side of the shed. And the airflow in here is then dramatically improved. I promised that I'd show you how I grow my parsnips and parsnips can be very difficult to grow. Their germination rate is generally reasonably poor and you can only really use seed that is fresh. So trying to carry seed from one year to another, say using 2018s in 2020, um, is likely to result in failure. So trying to get parsnip seeds to propagate um, is a bit of a challenge. Now you can sow it into the ground, into drills, and if you sow a goodly amount of seed, you can then prick out any clumps and get down to a single shoot and have your seedlings reasonably spaced out by having sown many into a drill. Alternatively, you can chit your seed by putting them into a container in perhaps a sandwich of paper towel or kitchen roll and leave them moist for probably a week to 10 days and you'll start to see the tiny little shoots coming out of the seed. In my experience, that's the best way forward because you can then pick out the seeds that have germinated and put them into the appropriate pot or tube, whatever you're gonna grow them in. And then when they've got a reasonable size, two or three inches, you can pop them into the ground. The most important thing is not to disturb the root. If you disturb the root on a parsnip, it will invariably fork and you end up with a misshapen parsnip, which is just not efficient when it comes to peeling and cooking. So the method I use is a large tray and some special 
tubes, which I'll show you. So this is the tray I'm going to use, and this has got holes in it for drainage. Um, so it's going to hold an awful lot of my special tubes, which are none other than toilet rolls. So I fill this with toilet rolls, and then I can add the compost on top. So we're just going to fill these up with compost now. It doesn't matter that the compost goes in between the toilet rolls. The one thing that we want to make sure is that everything stays moist and having the compost in between the toilet rolls just helps that process. So there we are, there's all the tubes filled up and this tray is now ready for when my chitting is complete and I'll show you those when they're ready and we can plant them up and hopefully we'll get 100% success then because every seed that we've planted into a tube will have a shoot coming out of the seed, at least that's the aim. This is the chitted parsnip seeds. So this is the big reveal, been in here I think about eight days now. And there we are. If you look carefully you can see the tiny shoots coming out of the seeds. And the game now is to pick the ones that have got the shoots and to pop those into the pre-prepared toilet rolls and then I'll cover it back up and wait for a few more and they'll keep shooting now over the coming days. So I'm going to just put some of these chitted parsnips into place in these tubes. It's a fiddly job, just need to make sure that we don't damage the root in any way. I guess we'll start off in a methodical way and go from left to right. The seagulls obviously want to serenade me while I'm doing this. They really are coming on now. Look at that one. So we'll get them in place and get them growing. So there we are, not enough to fill the, all the tubes, but enough to get going. So we're just gonna cover each one of those up gently with a little bit of compost. Gotta be really careful that you don't break that shoot. And once they're covered up, we just need to keep them moist and we wait for the leaves to rise above the compost which hopefully won't take too long. And then we'll keep an eye on those that are still chitting and hopefully then we can fill the remaining tubes and have a full tray. I would think by the end of this, I'll have far more chitted parsnip seeds than I actually need, but there'll be those that just don't get going at all. And that, of course, is what this process overcomes. And it'll enable me now to, well, at least when they've got leaves and got going and the weather's right, I'll be able to put them in the soil spaced out, knowing that I'll get a plant in every location that I've sown. So, there we are. Just balance those tops so that they don't dry out and we're done. So pretty much uh, this row left to do and the larger pots and the parsnip seeds 
or so. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochenbach.